You are watching Madeira Zumo 37. Hi guys, in my last tutorial I asked if you would want to see how to make this crop top and you definitely said you did. But first make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss out on any future tutorials. But this week we're going to be making this super cute flowy high low crop top. Last minute decision I added the turtleneck but I'll leave a link down below and a card if you want to see the tutorial for that. Otherwise let's get started. I'm going to be using this pattern piece that I use in pretty much all of my tutorials and I showed you guys how to do this in my high low peplum top tutorial. As always I'm using freezer paper that's what I like to use to make my patterns so we're gonna go ahead and get started now as you can see this pattern piece kind of has that curve right along here since the high low peplum top was more fitted so the first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and get rid of that so I'm gonna lay the pattern on top of another piece of freezer paper and then I'm actually gonna go ahead and trace around the neck shoulder and armhole then I'm going to go ahead and take my yardstick. I know it's from Home Depot, Home Depot, Home Depot, don't judge me, but I'm going to draw a straight line going down. And I'm just going to go ahead and take a Sharpie so you guys can get a better idea of what I'm doing here. So you see, now we've got a nice straight line. I'm going to go ahead and take that Sharpie and trace all the way around so you guys can get a better idea. Just disregard that head wrap situation. I don't really know what was going on. <laughs> right here I'm showing you guys what the lower neckline for the front neckline looks like. So you can see you've got the back neckline which is up higher and your front neckline which is lower. That's how I like to make mine and you've also got the straight line going down. So now we can move forward. So I've cut out basically my front pattern piece because you can see the neckline is lower. And I need to actually go ahead and make some lines since I am using freezer paper. So I'm going to take that yardstick and draw lines from top to bottom that are about an inch apart each. If you are using actual pattern paper, then you can just go ahead and draw your straight lines up and you don't really have to mark it first. And then you just go ahead and take your scissors and cut almost all the way up to the top going all the way across. Once you've done that, you'll end up with something that looks like this and you want to go ahead and get another piece of freezer paper and then lay what you just did on top of that. And I like to tape the sides down first. So I'll do my fold and then the other side and then I'll work my way around taping the rest of it down. This is what's going to make your top nice and flowy. So once you have everything all taped down, grab your Sharpie or pencil, whatever you're using and trace all the way around. And then you want to go ahead and cut all the way around. I did go ahead and mark fold so I know where to line my pattern up, but this is what your front pattern piece will look like. Going back to your pattern piece, we're going to move that neckline up just a little bit higher because now we're doing the back pattern piece. And I also decided to make mine a little bit lower at the bottom and the back. You don't have to do that, but if you do, just extend it down some. And I actually extended mine down about two inches. You can freehand it, then trace then cut. And here is what the back pattern piece will look like and again I marked where the fold will be. Now you can go ahead and lay your pattern on top of your fabric. I am using a knit four-way stretch fabric but I'll have a blog post with more information down below for you guys. You can either pin it down or use pattern weights, definitely up to you. But once you've done that you want to go ahead and trace all the way around. Then grab your scissors and cut your pattern out. And I do have it folded over twice so I'm cutting two pieces at one time, the front and the back. Here's the back piece. This is what it looks like when you remove your pattern. And I took one piece, separated it, and then laid my front pattern piece down, traced around that. You can see the neckline is lower. And this is what it looks like when you're done. Go ahead and unfold it and just lay it nice and neat. And then you want to take your back piece and lie that on top. My fabric is the same on both sides, but you want to make sure you line yours up with the right sides facing right sides. And then you want to go ahead and sew or serge along the dashed line. Once you've done that, this is what your top will look like. 
You can also see I went ahead and surged around the bottom, but we're ready to move on to the sleeves. Again, I showed you guys how to make the sleeves in that high low peplum top tutorial. You don't need to make any changes to that pattern piece. So you lay that on your fabric along the fold and you'll cut out two pieces that look like this. Working with one piece, I did go ahead and surge along the bottom of my sleeve and I'm going to use Wonder Tape, which is my favorite thing ever. I love to use this, especially when I'm working with knit or stretch fabrics. I do have a full video on this, so I will leave that down below or in a card up above for you guys if you want to check it out. But all you need to do is press your Wonder Tape down, peel it up, and it just makes it so much easier to fold your fabric over, especially if you're doing any sort of hem like we're doing here. So you'll see I just go ahead and fold it over and press it down and I'm doing this on what would be the wrong side of the fabric, then you wanna fold it over to the right side of your fabric, and all you're gonna do from here is top stitch. So once you have done that, this is what it'll look like. So we've top stitched along the right sides of your fabric, which is basically just sewing on top of your fabric. You want to fold it with your right sides facing together, line it up nice and even, and pin all the way down, and then serge or sew all the way down. Alright guys, so here is what your finished sleeve will look like when you have it folded with the right sides facing out and you're ready to attach this to your top. So you want your top to be facing wrong sides out, you want your sleeve facing right sides out, and then you'll tuck it into your top. Tuck that right into the armhole and I like to line up my bottom seams first just because I find that it's easier for me and it helps make sure everything is nice and even. So I'll go ahead and get that lined up, take one of my pins and pin it. Then I fold that sleeve just to find where the top is going to be, and then I will attach that to the top seam, line it up nice and even, and then I'll pin it down. Once I have that pinned down, then I'll work all the way around, pinning the rest of it, or you can also use Wonder Tape here, it's definitely up to you, but this is what it'll look like once you've done that, and you wanna take that to your serger or sewing machine. And try not to cover up everything that you just did. Sorry about that, you guys. But here's what it'll look like once you've either sewn or surged all the way around. And I'm just going to pull the sleeve out so you can see what it looks like on its right sides. And you're almost done. The last thing that you'll need to do is hem the top and the bottom. So I surged all the way around the bottom of mine. So I'm going to go ahead and use my Wonder Tape and I will just fold it over once, once I place my Wonder Tape down, and then I will take that to my sewing machine and go ahead and top stitch all the way around. And you can do the same for the neckline, or if you want to add the turtleneck like I did, like I said, click the card above, or I'll have the link down below for you guys. But that's pretty much it. This is all you need to do, the last step, doing your top stitching, and you are done. I really hope that you guys have enjoyed this tutorial and found it helpful. Definitely leave me a comment down below letting me know what you thought of it, and make sure that you guys subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you all, and until my next video, assalamu alaikum. Peace. Now let's check out our Material Girl of the Week. This is super cute. It's kind of a throwback because it's an older post. I don't know how I missed it on Instagram, but it's from Dan Dan. And I like the vintage vibe that you did there. She used my maxi tool skirt tutorial. So definitely keep those Material Girl hashtags coming so I can see and share. And as usual, you guys can catch up with me everywhere at Nadir037. If you want to check out that maxi tool skirt tutorial, definitely click the video playing or I will have a card coming up above. And of course, all the links will be down below.